This week's SmackDown should be a very powerful and important lesson for everybody in charge of WWE. You start the show with Roman Reigns, you end the show with Roman Reigns, it's all good. It manages to figure out a way to work all out. When you deviate from the script and you want to feature something else or someone else or some other story as your prominent featured act for the week, you get what you get this week, which is a crappy, mostly snooze fest show. Shame on you. Shame on you. Like, even the company wants to show the tribal chief disrespect. It's unbelievable. Like, who, who thought it would be a good idea to make the featured story this week, Sasha Banks and Carmella? Like, has this really been that hot, this compelling, this interesting, that people really care that much about it? Like, you start off with the contract signing, and oh, look! The white bitch with the blonde wig, blonde wig, blonde weave, I'm going to call it a wig. The blonde wig has a black man servant. Cute. Real cute. What's even more cute, though, is deciding that you actually want to give microphone time to both Sasha Banks and Carmella. They are not good, okay? The, the, these promos that they're doing are not good at all. This was really bad. And then, oh yeah, by the way, totally, totally realistic and believable that Sasha Banks could beat up the black manservant. Like, that was dumb. Like, here I am, expecting to tune in and thinking I'm going to get something involving the Tribal Chief, and instead I get this crap. And then it continues. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Why is he still a thing? In the year of a pandemic, why do we have to continue to see this plague weekly infect the WWE product? In this case, SmackDown. Why, 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 why? Why is he wrestling? Why is he beating Montez Ford? Bigger overarching question. Why in the hell is this jabroni, this sixth degree creator wrestler, still winning matches in 2020? Why, why, why? <laughs> Dolph Ziggler! It's horrible. I was looking for a little reprieve because the first half hour of this show absolutely sucked. Thankfully, thankfully, our Intercontinental Champion did his best to try and save the day. Like, he's right. Sami Zayn gets absolutely no respect. He's our Intercontinental Champion, and Big E's got a new fancy design graphic t-shirt, and Sami Zayn's wondering where his is. And when he's asking for a shirt, that shouldn't be such a big deal. But WWE, when I look at your site and see the new shirt that you put out there for him, we asked for a shirt. We didn't ask for that shirt. Did you even try? Did you even care? Did you even put a little effort into it? Jesus H. Christ! This is where character becomes reality. The dude legitimately isn't getting any respect. And then he has to sit there and wrestle somebody like Big E with a hand injury? Like, how do you get off treating your champions like this? Especially one that means so much to you, like the international, or excuse me, the intercontinental champion, who really is the international champion, let's be clear. Because he is a champion for all countries, all creeds, all colors, all religions, all races, all ethnicities, all national origins. I've said that twice now. I'm off my game. It doesn't matter because Sami Zayn doesn't care. What he does care about is being a representative for all of us. And yet they throw him out there. When they finally give him a shirt, it sucks. Make him wrestle somebody big and powerful like Big E with short notice before the pay-per-view with a hand injury. And yet somehow, some way, whether it's the use of the Syrian socket slash or just his grit, his intelligence, he's able to overcome all of these odds, all of this disrespect, and still achieve a very hard-fought count-out victory. Don't hate the game. Respect the player. Sami Zayn is our Intercontinental Champion, and that's something that we should all be damn proud of. Just like Montez Ford should think like every day that he loses a match, Bianca Belair is still his wife. So really, he's winning the game of life. And she was looking fly as hell again.
calling Bailey Dusty again. And this time, this time, she came with receipts. And I loved it. I loved it. Like, I hope they're not giving this match away next week. I think they are. This could have waited to the pay-per-view. Let's make it wait to the pay-per-view. But uh, two things. Bianca is sexy as shit. Number two, Bailey using the Ding Dong reference. You start to wonder where they might have gotten that from. Ding Dong, dumb dicks, I highly doubt that came from somebody in the company. I'm just saying. Just saying. So, it took us about an hour to get to the thing that really matters the most. Which is our tribal chief, the head of the table, the universal champion, Roman Reigns. And I could see people on Twitter were, were you know, ready for this to happen because they were done with the show at this point. They said, you know, you fucked with us by not having this kick off the show. Like, we got things to do. It's a Friday night. But we want to see the tribal chief. We want to see Roman Reigns. Well, we got it. But not initially. You know, apparently Kevin Owens sees a bunch of props. Like tables and ladders and chairs, and that is apparently the foundation and basis for cutting a promo in the wrestling world of 2020, I guess. At least Roman Reigns was paying attention to every word that was said backstage, all while watching the TV at a normal direction, at a normal angle, the way sane people would. The Tribal Chief doesn't ascribe to that looking at an awkward, crooked angle crap. He watches it straight ahead like a sane human being would. And here's Jey Uso trying his best, God willing, trying his best to strike back against Kevin Owens to fight against the disrespect that has been shown to the tribal chief by Kevin Owens. And it's like Jay can't get right. He's just not learning. He just doesn't get it. You talk about sending talents back to the performance center like, Jay's literally about to be back on the short bus to the Performance Center if he can't figure out how to do something right. Seriously. Now, what I appreciate about this segment is why Kevin Owens is laying the beat down on Jay Uso because Jay can't learn and he can't get right. Now, here's Roman Reigns. Like, he sees his family getting beat down and he wants to respond. He's ready to respond. But a great leader, a true leader, understands the strengths and experience of others around them and leverages it. So when Paul Heyman is there in his ear telling him, you're the tribal chief, you're the champion, you make the rules, like that was fantastic. And you could see Roman Reigns internalizing what he was saying and realizing that he's right. And he may very well have even let it alone for the night. But Kevin Owens doing what whiteys like to do is not leave shit alone. And he kept bragging about what he did and bragging about what he's going to do there. Roman Reigns at TLC, he's tiptoeing through the tulips. Roman Reigns is going to help him smell the fucking roses. And what was fascinating and fantastic about this, it was such a one-sided beatdown. He's talking while he's doing it. He beat the ever-loving brakes off of him. He's also telling an even bigger story about how Roman Reigns is not just putting food on his family's table, but he's putting food on the table for everybody with SmackDown, everybody with WWE. He truly is the tribal chief. He is the head of the table for all of WWE. And as a result, Kevin Owens is trying to screw that up. You know, and he, even at the end, with a smile on his face, he's pleading to Kevin Owens' wife and the kids to talk some sense to this man before he has to take the food off the table. Like, that's what you got to do. Sometimes you got to kick him off the island. This was the highlight of the show, as it went all downhill from here. The Riot Squad versus Billy Kay and her surprise partner, Natalia. Really bad. And I see people talking about Ruby Riot. Y'all realize she sucks, right? I can't tell you how many times in the past couple of months I've seen her in a match, and it's botchy and sloppy. Like, she's really bad. Like, really bad. They're all really bad. Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura versus Otis and Chad Gable. Like, personally, I would have rather have just seen some of the stuff from the the American Alpha thing, the, the stuff they were doing on Instagram. Just show me that with Otis and Chad Gable. Just show me that. I don't need to see a match. Just 
Go a little bit deeper into why all of a sudden Chad Gable's doing this and what this is all about and what this is going to mean to Otis. Like, I would have rather seen that. Like, there's a potential there for some interesting dynamics and some interesting character development. I realize they'll give up on it in a month or two, as they so often do. Uh, but, you know, not everything needs a fucking match, is all I'm going to say. Uh, which brings me to the main event, because we certainly didn't need this match. Carmella versus Sasha Banks, because we got ants in our pants. We can't wait. This is going to be for the SmackDown's Women's Championship. That's what we were building up the whole night to, was this crap. Yeah. Do we even remember anything about the match other than the finish? Sasha loses her cool, gets DQ'd, so Carmella wins, but she's not the champion. And then Carmella wipes out Sasha after the match. She eventually breaks the gimmick, heavily gimmick champagne bottle across her back. Like, we couldn't even do that across the head. We did it against the swell of the back. Like, it was dumb. Like, it's just really dumb. You know, like Carmella sitting there showing everybody what Corey Graves was probably doing while he was watching her get all aggressive. Like he, it's, the champagne spurted for a little bit and then nothing happened. <laughs> um, that was bad. This was a bad episode of SmackDown. Like Sami Zayn was in his glory. Roman Reigns was Roman Reigns. And if it didn't involve these guys this week, it pretty much sucked. Now, you can still get away with that, because that's two segments of a show, but you can do better. You can do a lot better, because a lot of this was just filler, throwaway crap, and then the thing that you were building up through throughout the whole night, the thing that you made, the big story of the night, like, it sucks. It sucks. Carmelo sucks. Sasha Banks on the mic in this role sucks. There's no chemistry between the two in the ring. There's no chemistry between the two of them as characters on the mic. This whole story just sucks, 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 sucks. And God, I hope, I hope that TLC is the end of this crap. Because we don't need it anymore and we don't want it anymore. Now I'm sure some of you are going to rage with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire in the comments section about how I dare I say that about Sasha Banks. But come on, man. Get a clue. Get a grip. Horrible. That's why I'm OTRS Central. I'm not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Because I'll always keep it real with you. No matter how much you try to deny the truth and reality.